Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech and Auto Show. I'm your host Manav Sinha. But before we kick off with the proceedings, there is one thing I would like to talk to you about. Well, it's about something that we have been talking about since the past year and a half. It's about the coronavirus pandemic. It's not gone away yet. So please be safe, stay indoors, don't step out until unless it's absolutely necessary. Sanitize your hands, maintain social distancing, mask up. You know the drill. We all are aware of it by now. So we really need to be responsible in order to hopefully prevent the third wave from reaching us. Having said that, well, this is the Tech and Auto Show, which means this is the best of both worlds, technology as well as automobiles at one place, which basically means why should you be watching two shows when you can watch one? This one. Now, just like every time, there's a lot of action that we have to cover in this episode. So let's kick things off by first showing you a glimpse of what you can expect over the course of the next half an hour. This week, we're going to kick things off with a small little hatchback that goes like a big, fast car. We're talking about the Mini Cooper S. The 2021 model has been launched and we have driven it. That's not it. We'll also step into the world of gaming and find out how the Asus ROG Flow X13 works. Is it the machine that you need to buy? And we'll also list down the best performance cars that you can buy in under 15 lakh rupees in the Indian market right now. So yes, all of that action will be coming your way. And yes, for those who have noticed, this is the 2021 Honda CBR 650R, a really nice motorcycle. We're working on bringing you the story very soon, so expect it on the show real, real soon. Having said that, we're going to start off with the Mini Cooper, a car that's small in size, but very big in terms of history and legacy. Now, building up on an icon can be a really challenging task and Mini has done it once again with the 2021 model. It's given it some new design updates, some new feature updates. But has the car really changed all that much? Well, there's only one way to find out. So we're going to head on over to Arjit Garg and take a closer look. If you watch our show or for that matter any other auto show, you must have realized by now that there is a usual script we auto journalists follow. We do the generic overview of the brand or the car followed by the big reveal. But then there are few vehicles which are so unique and so iconic they need no introduction like this mini hatchback with me today. Now BMW Group has recently launched the updated 2021 mini series in India including the three-door Cooper S, the one we are driving today, the more powerful JCW and the convertible. Starting our review with the design first, the mini three-door hatch as I mentioned before, is instantly recognizable thanks to the timeless design that has been carried forward for generations without making it look dated. The new model, however, gets an updated front design with LED headlights. The wide piano black finish grille enclosure with iconic round lights and black stripes on the bonnet with an air intake gives it a very cartoonish yet cute look. Nothing much is happening at the side apart from the newly designed 17 inch alloys while the rear gets redesigned apron and LED tail lamps in a union jack design revealing its British heritage. Overall the Mini Cooper S is an eye turner in every possible sense. Unlike the exteriors, the interior of the 2021 Mini Cooper S resonates futuristic design while keeping its original round theme intact. What I especially like is this steering mounted digital instrument cluster and the whole ambient lighting theme which Mini has given in the Cooper S. Apart from this, this cabin is super sporty and super comfortable to sit. The black themed interior layout snatches away the airiness feel from the cabin but then adds to a sporty touch which is a smart move considering there is no actual space inside the cabin. But then it's not a car for someone seeking practicality. The dashboard remains more or less same having an 8.8 inch central screen with new piano black high gloss surround. The addition of lights on the surround adds to the charm. There is the new 5-inch multifunctional instrument display and a pop-up HUD. 
The steering wheel is also redesigned while the toggle switches remains the same. Mini has also elevated the in-cabin experience with whole ambient lighting work. The seats are cushiony and comfortable for a long drive and holds you well while accelerating hard. Accessing the rear seat is a bit of a challenge with all those buttons to slide forward the front seat. Even if you successfully manage to do so, sitting behind won't be possible. As for the boot, it has a dual deck structure and can hold small bags at the best. I did not like the way steering mountain buttons behave, while the carbon fiber panels on the dash further elevates the overall sportiness in the cabin. Mini is offering the 2021 Cooper S with only one engine option which is a 2 liter petrol unit producing 191 horsepower and 280 Nm of torque and is mated to a 7 speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Now on paper these numbers are super impressive given the size of the vehicle. But how good is it actually to drive? Well let's just find out. Not only on the paper, these numbers are super impressive in real life driving as well. There are three driving modes, namely mid, sport and green to choose from. And if you're looking for fun driving, sport mode can push you from 0 to 100 in just 6.7 seconds. I really like the overall feedback of the engine and gearbox and the car felt amply powerful. What I did not like was the response of the steering which was on the heavier side and takes a lot of effort to maneuver. The suspension was soft and not stiff for sporty driving. Basically, Mini is a mixed bag of emotions for drivers. Some elements are inclined towards plush driving while some are towards sporty driving. But in overall scenario, the car makes you feel happy at the end of a drive. In terms of the safety, Mini gets dual airbags brake assist, run flat tires to name a few. Mileage is claimed to be at 16.35 km per litre while regenerative braking in green mode saves some extra few kilometers. Now if I have to be absolute honest, I don't find much of a use case for the mini cars in India barring the JCW model which of course is a hot hatchback and the convertible which you can use as a second car for your family trips if you are living in a region with less dust pollution. But apart from that, the Mini Cooper S3 door as a luxury vehicle doesn't make sense if you are spending Rs 40 lakh because it is zero on practicality. Having said that, if you are in the market looking for something unique, something so iconic that it can turn all the heads on the road, then look no further than the 2021 Mini Cooper S 3-door hatchback. Now let's move on to the world of technology and let's talk about something that really excites me personally. I'm talking about the world of gaming. Now, that world has really blown up in the past year and a half because everybody wants to do some gaming because, well, all of us are sitting at home as we should be, so we have a lot of time to kill. However, if you want your hands on a gaming laptop, you often have to make some compromises. Either it's too heavy or it doesn't have enough firepower. So what if a brand tried to mix both of them together? Well, that is exactly what Asus has tried to done. It's a good gaming laptop, but our in-house gaming champion Shovik says that there is more to it than what just reads the eye. I'm really excited to see the story, so let's head on over right away. Gaming laptops are infamous for being heavy devices and for that matter, any light gaming laptop has typically always been seen as one not powerful enough. However, what if we told you that Asus has tried to bring to the market a gaming laptop which has a fully spec performance CPU and can potentially support up to the NVIDIA RTX 3080. You've probably heard of this product in the market and we've had the chance to use the Asus ROG Flow X13. Now, it is a gaming laptop on paper, but it can do a lot more than just that. It's also not one that supports RTX 3080 natively. 
and we're going to talk about it in terms of whether a laptop like this makes sense for people to buy in our review of the Asus ROG Flow X13. Now let's straight up start by talking about the design of the Asus ROG Flow X13. It is a slim laptop to start with and a very portable one at that. In fact, it feels as light and portable as you would want any Ultrabook to be. The good thing is that it doesn't feel too light and it feels sturdy enough on the overall sense. Yes, there are a bit too much plastic usage and the overall upper lid feels not as premium as many other metal built laptops would but on overall terms the smooth rubberized finish does work and it doesn't sustain too much damages although you have to be careful about keeping the laptop away from the back which has keys and other metal objects. Now on overall terms it is very easy to use, it is very good to use and it is very ergonomic to use. It looks very decent and as a laptop on standalone terms, the Asus ROG Flow X13 does ace the portability test. Now when it comes to the overall ergonomics, the Asus ROG Flow X13 is a bit of a mixed bag. In terms of what's good are the number of ports which is pretty decent, however the rubber flap which hides the XG port which is the connector to the external GPU and the USB-C port to the left side is something that you might tend to lose if you are not particularly careful. The keyboard is very good to use of course, however the display does seem to move around quite a bit and doesn't stay absolutely steady with its hinge and that is a problem that you might notice if you happen to type a lot when you're on the move. Now coming to the most important point of any performance laptop is of course performance and the ASUS ROG Flow X13 does offer an interesting proposition. The laptop comes with an AMD Ryzen 5000 series Ryzen 9 processor which sits at the top of AMD's pile and is more than powerful enough to take on most everyday tasks and is competent enough for gaming as well. However, the internal GPU is only a GTX 1650 from Nvidia and that by any means is not the best GPU in the market for gaming purposes. In fact, most budget gaming laptops are the ones that still use GTX 1650 and on this note, the ROG Flow X13 will leave you wanting for more. It gets a 4K display and the GPU cannot make the most of it since you cannot render games at 4K. In fact, Playing even less demanding titles such as FIFA 21, even at full HD resolution means that you will face stutters if you set your graphics quality to maximum. So you will need to limit your frame rates and reduce your graphics quality to get a playable gameplay experience. However, ASUS wants to detail an external RTX 3080 with the XG port which it bundles with this laptop and that is something that is designed to help you amp up the overall performance. Unfortunately, we did not have access to an external graphics card at the time of our review and there's no denying that the RTX 3080 is of course a gaming beast and with that, there's no denying that the ROG Flow X13 should perform well enough. However, whether it's going to do well enough as a cohesive unit in terms of heating, throttling and other factors is something that remains to be seen. On the overall terms, as a general user for everyday usage, the ROG Flow X13 is more than good enough. Its performance is super smooth for everyday tasks and multitasking and work for video conferencing, emails and multi-tab browsing experiences. It is not just good enough, it is very very good. The typing experience is also quite great but the trackpad may not be the best in its class. So to sum up, is the ASUS ROG Flow X13 a laptop that you would want to buy? Is it something that feels like a good laptop? And in one word, yes it does. It feels like something that has a lot of innovation packed into it and that has the prospect of being a beast of a machine when the external GPU is connected to it. Without it, as a casual gamer and an everyday work person, you will find it more than good enough. But for work, it's not the exact kind of laptop that you would want. You might want something that looks a little more upmarket and not very plasticky or rubbery. 
which is something that the Asu Saruji Flow X30 does. However, take nothing away from it for on the overall sense, the ROG Flow X13 is one of the best laptops in the market as an overall experience right now. Welcome back, you're watching the Tech and Auto Show and I'm your host Manav Sinha and yes, this is the 2021 Honda CBR650R that's giving us company today. Now bikes like these are exciting, isn't it? I mean, look at it. And they're exciting, well, for several reasons. A big one is the fact that these are performance-oriented machines and if you're an auto enthusiast, performance really gives you the tingles. But when it comes to the car space, if you want yourself some performance, you've often had to spend quite a lot of money for it. But that has changed in the past couple of years because automakers now are giving you a lot of performance for a little less money. So we decided to put together a list of the top performance cars that you can buy within a budget of 15 lakh rupees. And here's Anirudh telling you all about it up next. Now in the past, we have brought you plenty of carefully curated lists of cars that fit the needs for all and everyone. You know, aspects like features, fuel efficiency, safety, or even alternate powertrains. But lately, we figured that we have not done a video just for the enthusiast. You know, the ones who directly jump to the power figures on a spec sheet, or the ones who ask for the 0 to 100 time of a car rather than asking questions like, Kitna deti hai? So, here is our list of top 5 cars that you can buy under Rs 15 lakh that will definitely put a grin on your face for the way it drives. Now we are starting our list off with an SUV and a good one indeed. Now you see when Kia launched the Celtos in India, it was an instant hit and the next big thing for the company was the Sonnet. Now we knew pretty much everything about the car since it shared the same lineage as the Hyundai Venue. But nonetheless, it was launched and it surprised us all over again. Not just for the way it looks or the features it carries, but for the way everything came as a package on the road. Now under the bonnet, the Sonnet gets three engines and five transmission options that include a 1.2 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine, paired to a five speed manual transmission and a one litre turbo petrol engine mated to a six speed IMT unit or a seven speed DCT unit. However, the one that you should be looking for is the one litre turbo petrol engine that delivers 118 bhp and 172 newton meters of torque. Now the words hot hatch in India quickly brings up the name Volkswagen Polo GT TSI and for good reasons indeed. But in 2020, Volkswagen did an upgrade on the car which led to a lot of enthusiasts squint in suspicion. It ditched the 1.3 litre four-cylinder engine for a one litre turbocharged three-cylinder engine. And also the transmission was converted from the popular seven-speed DSG to a six-speed torque converter. But the question still remains. Did it really dilute the essence of the car? Not at all. The numbers on the spec sheet of the new Polo GT tells the same story as the old one. The drop in displacement and the number of the cylinders has not diluted the essence of the car. The car still delivers 108 bhp and 175 newton meters of torque through a 6-speed torque converter. Now we all love the DSG but the 6-speed torque converter seems like a more practical option considering the better drive in bumper to bumper city traffic. And the next car on our list is the Hyundai Grand i10 NEOS. Now the NEOS was a significant upgrade from the model it replaced, the Grand i10. Not just in terms of features or looks, but also in terms of powertrain. It gets the same 1 litre turbocharged petrol engine that you see in the venue, a little bit lower on the output, but you should know that it doesn't dilute the essence of the car at all. Now the 1 litre engine we talked about is also the most powerful one in the lineup. It comes mated to a 5-speed manual transmission and makes 99 bhp and 172 newton meters of torque. Apart from that engine, there are 1.2 litre petrol and diesel engines that are paired with either a 5-speed manual or an AMT transmission.
Now the next SUV on our list is the Tata Nexon. Indian made, check. Safest car, check. Features filled to the brim, check. But the one that is not talked as much is its powertrain. Now at its heart, the Nexon gets two options including a 1.2 litre turbocharged petrol engine and the 1.5 litre diesel engine. The petrol unit outputs 118 bhp and 170 Nm of torque, while the diesel engine delivers 108 bhp and 260 Nm of torque. Transmission options include a 6-speed manual gearbox and an automated manual transmission for both the engines. Now the Hyundai Varna is one of the most potent offerings in the executive sedan segment in India. It goes up against some of the most popular badges like the Honda City. Now if I'm talking about a car that can go against the Honda City, it's sure got a few tricks up its sleeve and the ace of the argument would be the engine. Under the hood, you can choose between a 1.5 litre petrol engine, a 1.5 litre diesel engine or a 1 litre turbo petrol engine. The engine that we should be talking about is obviously the 1 litre turbo petrol engine that delivers 118 bhp and 172 Nm of torque. And with that, we've come to the end of this edition of the Tekken Auto Show. How do you define the show? Is there anything you have to say, anything you want us to cover or simply want to have a conversation with us? Well, reach out to us on Twitter, we are more than happy to talk. If it's about technology, News 80 Tech is where we are at. If it's about automobiles, tweet out to us at News18Auto. And remember, by logging on to News18.com, you can read more on both these industries as well as the 2021 Honda CBR 650R. Before I let you go though, I have to make that request once again. The request that you stay safe, sanitize, maintain social distancing and step out only when it's absolutely necessary. Yes, the cases are down, but we want to keep it that way, right? If the third wave doesn't come, there will be nothing like it. Now, with that, that's about all for today. I'll catch you same time next week, only on CNN News 18.